Okay, I'll start with the presentation. A very good morning. We are from Group 11 doing the production of Styrene. I'm Brian Koo, who will start with introducing Styrene and present and present the market study and plant location selection. Styrene is an organic compound with a chemical formula of C8H8. Um, styrene is a flammable and colorless liquid in room conditions that gives off a pungent smell. The styrene monomer is a polymer derivative that is used in many different fields, primarily for polystyrene, acrylyl nitrile butadiene styrene, ABS, and styrene butadiene rubber, to name a few. This graph illustrates the consumption and growth of styrene from year 2007 to 2017, where China shows 150% growth in the decade itself. In 2019, China is still the biggest consumer of styrene overall. This demand growth by region can be summarized into four stages of slow, rapid, declining, and almost static growth. In China, there is still a lot of demand for growth opportunities. The forecasted growth of styrene consumption from year 2015 to 2025 shows the highest increase rates in China, and American and European consumptions are seeing a leveling off period in the 2015 to 2025 decade. In 2019, China is the biggest producer of sorry. In 2019, China is the biggest producer of styrene at 27% of the global market share. From this, from these statistics, the new styrene supplies from China, based on year 2018, will be around 80% of the global share by year 2025. This shows an impressive styrene market growth and opportunities in China for the coming years. Currently, the market price for styrene in China is at around USD 771 per ton. As one of the most important derivatives of styrene, the acrylyl nitrile butadiene styrene, ABS, uh, shows an obvious increase in the trend of projected market value from year 2016 to year 2024. This increase in market value for ABS will reflect similarly for styrene as well. With reference to some of the styrene plant capacities in China, who are also the competitors, most of the existing styrene plant capacities are in the range of 400,000 tons per year um, to so, 600. So, sorry to interrupt for a while. Uh, I yeah. think your slide is not really moving. Are, are you currently still in uh, slide number four? Uh, no, I'm in slide number seven. Um, uh, you, 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 I think your slide is not really moving. Uh, is it my problems or any others L and uh, any one of you also experience the same thing? No, we are in in the same uh, slide with Brian. Oh, is it? Okay, okay. Yeah, okay. Me too. Okay. All right. Oh, okay, so I'll continue. Yeah? With reference to some of the styrene plant capacities in China, who are also the competitors. Most of the existing styrene plant capacities are in the range of 400,000 tons per year to 600,000 tons per year. The median value of 500,000 tons per year is selected as the new styrene plant production uh, capacity. For the plant location, there were three potential industrial zones that were selected based on some prelimin preliminary selection criteria, such as the land price and transportation availability. The table shows a summarized version of the selection criteria for potential locations where a rating of one to five is given, five being the most favorable and one as the least favorable. Some of the plant location criteria of considerations includes the availability of raw materials, especially ethyl benzene, um, utility supply, potential customers, transportation and infrastructure, government incentives, environmental impacts, and labor supply. After further analysis of various criteria, the location selection for the plant is in Lingshan Road, uh, Ningbo Zhejiang. That's all from my part. My group mate, Singer, will continue with the presentation. Thank you, Brian and Singer. Now I will proceed to the reaction pathway and possible hazard 
from the production of styrene. There are four alternative ways to produce styrene. The first way to produce styrene is the most conventional way, which using the dehydrogenation method, you dehydrogenate ethyl benzene to form styrene. This is an endothermic reaction. This reaction utilizes two plug flow reactors to convert ethyl benzene to styrene. A three phase separator is used to separate the desired products and unreacted ethyl benzene to the next two distillation columns for further separation. Next alternative way is side chain alkylation reaction of toluene with methanol. This alternative method only involves one step, which the methanol is dehydrogenated to form formaldehyde and then react with toluene to form, to form styrene. This reaction pathway is more energy saving to the, compared to the conventional method to produce styrene. The third alternative way is the POSM process. There are three steps which are involved in this reaction pathway. Firstly, ethyl benzene is reacted with oxygen to produce ethyl benzene hydroperoxide. Next, it is then reacted with propylene to produce propylene oxide and alpha phenyl ethanol. Lastly, alpha phenyl ethanol is then dehydrated to form styrene. However, this reaction pathway is focusing on producing propylene oxide as main product, but styrene as side product. Last alternative way is styrene extraction from pyrolysis, pyrolysis gasoline process. In this process, the column is used to separate the hydrocarbons. BTX is then channeled to a series of reactors to perform hydrotreating, hydrodesulfurization, and hydrodealkylation in order to extract out the benzene. Ethylene is added to perform alkylation with benzene to form ethyl benzene which later undergoes dehydrogenation to produce styrene. The most promising reaction pathway that we've chosen in the study is alternative A. This is still including process as well as the bleach, which having a conversion of 66.61% and high product yield of 87% compared with the alternative B. Moreover, the byproducts such as toluene and benzene produced can bristle at a high price after the purification process, which can further reduce the capital cost of the production. Other than that, the presence of recycled stream ethyl benzene can reduce the amount of raw fresh ethyl benzene to be fit in the reaction. Last but not the least, the capital investment is approximately half of the alternative feed that makes it suitable for a reaction pathway choosing. Next, move on to the possible hazards they may cause during the production. First and foremost is the exposure of chemicals such as benzene and toluene will cause irritation and health damage. Next, the storage of chemicals should be kept away from any heat and possible ignition source to avoid explosion happen. After that, the storage of the chemicals must be at dry and well ventilated area which have an environment of ambient temperature to ensure the safety. Last but not the least, avoid working with the pressurized system as excessive pressure will cause explosion. My part is done. Now I will pass the journey. Thank you. Thank you, Singye. We will now be talking about the process pathway of dehydrogenation of ethyl benzene into styrene. I am Juni, and I will start off with the reactor part, core systems 100 and 200. First, fresh ethyl benzene is mixed with the recycled stream from distillation column 2, and it will be fed into a heater B100. The feed temperature is increased and the feed components are vaporized from liquid phase. A steam feed is then introduced and mixed into the main feed. The steam feed serves to further increase the feed temperature to 573 degrees Celsius, which is optimal. Oh. Sorry. Um, a steam feed is then introduced and mixed into the main feed this steam feed serves to further increase the feed temperature to 573.5 degrees Celsius, which is the optimal reaction temperature. The feed then enters the first reactor, R100, where dehydrogenation takes place. As this reaction is an endothermic reaction, a second reactor is placed to yield more styrene. As the feed exits R100, it is fed into a furnace to further increase, no, to increase the temperature to 600 degrees Celsius before it enters the second reactor R200. 
Both R100 and R200 are identical reactors, both used to carry out dehydrogenation of ethyl benzene into styrene. As this reaction is endothermic, it is carried out in a high temperature and low pressure condition. As the temperature and conversion rate drops across the reactor, this will discourage the production of styrene. So two reactors are arranged in series with a furnace in between to provide sufficient heat duty to bring back the optimal feed condition for the dehydrogenation process. Although a high temperature will favor the forward reaction of dehydrogenation, it will also cause side reactions to occur, producing undesired products such as benzene, ethylene, toluene, and methane. Therefore, the steam feed introduced is used to reduce the pressure of the feed stream, and this will reduce the happening of these side reactions. Moving on to the heuristics used for the reactors. Heuristic one, as mentioned by Sinyue, where the selection of raw materials and chemical reactions were deliberated, we have decided that dehydrogenation of the ethyl benzene is chosen, and the raw material used is ethyl benzene. Heuristic 7 is also applied where two reactors are used and arranged in series. Therefore, the reactor conditions are adjusted at high temperature and low pressure. A catalyst of potassium promoted iron oxide is also utilized to promote styrene production. Lastly, heuristic 23 is applied. As our reaction is endothermic, the inert steam fit is used in excess to control the high temperature. As for the design considerations for each equal equipment involved in these two core systems, heater E100 is made out of carbon steel as it is the cheaper option and has, let, had, has acceptable tensile strength and ductility. This material is able to handle temperature ranges from 500 to 700 degrees Celsius. Both R11 and R200 are made out of stainless steel type 304. This is because the reaction temperature is above 550 degrees Celsius and carbon steel is unable to withstand the high temperatures above 400 degrees Celsius for prolonged usage. Lastly, the furnace is made out of refractory, refractory bricks as it can handle temperatures above 550 degrees Celsius. That is all for my part. I will now pass the presentation to Jiayi. Thank you, Juni. I am Jiayi, and now I will continue for the process flow. In core system 300, after the stream coming out from the second reactor at high temperature, it is directed into several stages of cooling by coolers. The coolers cool down the stream from 577.3 degrees Celsius to 65 degrees Celsius before entering the three-phase separator. The pressure drop across each coolers are about 1.5 PSI or equivalent to 10.34 kPa. After the third coolers, the stream is directed into three-phase separator at 65 degrees Celsius and 129 kPa. Since the feed of the three-phase separator are vapor-liquid mixtures, there will be three outlets from the separator. The top outlet is the vapor phase, which has hydrogen, methane, and ethane. Then the second outlet, which is at the middle, has four components, which is ethyl benzene, benzene, toluene, and styrene. These are light liquid phase components. Lastly, the water, which has the highest density among the other components, exceeds the separator as the bottom outlet as heavy liquid. Moving on. The working principle for three-phase separator is mainly depends on the density difference between the components. As shown in the table, the water which has the highest density acts as the heavy liquid, whereas the component which shaded in grey are the light liquid and they have similar density. At last, the last three components are in vapor phase and exist as top vapor outlet. In addition, the table here show showing the boiling point of all components in three different pressure. This table is to provide a guide on uh, which operating temperature and pressure to be chosen. The operating pressure to be chosen is at 101.3 kPa, which is the atmospheric pressure. This is because since it is in the atmospheric pressure, then the cost will be further reduced as no additional pump or compressor are needed. Secondly, 
The temperature is set at 65 degrees Celsius as the operating temperature have to ensure the vapor phase stays in the vapor and the light liquid and heavy liquid phase stay in liquid. Apart from that, the temperature should not be higher than 125 degrees Celsius to prevent the polymerization of the styrene. Next is the heuristic used in design the three phase separator. The heuristic used is heuristic 10 where coolers were used to cool down the string before entering the three-phase separator. Besides that, the coolers designs are follow heuristic 17 and heuristic 31, where the cooling water is used instead of refrigerants, and 1.5 PSI pressure drop across the coolers were estimated. Lastly, the carbon steel is the construction materials used for three-phase separators and coolers. This is because our plant only involves hydrocarbon, which is organic compounds, without the presence of strong acid or alkaline that will cause corrosions. corrosions. Uh, lastly, the carbon steel is at low cost and widely available. Now, I will pass to Qingyi to continue the presentation. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Jiayi. I will continue the presentation today by sharing the details on core system 400 and 500. Both of these core systems are separation systems similar to core system 300, as we mentioned by Jai just now. However, in core system 400 and 500, there are two outlets, top and bottom. I'll start by explaining core system 400. This core system mainly consists of a distillation column that separates the desired product, which is starting at the bottom outlet, and other products from the reaction will end up in a top outlet. So the distillation process will be carried out by distillation column 2. Distillation column 1 is operated in a vacuum condition to reduce the boiling point of the compound. With this, the workload of the condenser and reboiler can be decreased. A pump is increased as the outlet of the soap products before it enters distillation column 2. It increases the pressure of the liquid to 150 kPa as distillation column 2 can be operated in normal condition and to allow pressure drop across distillation column 2. The bottom outlet of distillation column 1 must be assured to be below 125 degrees Celsius because if the temperature exceeds 125 degrees Celsius, styrene monomer will polymerize and form polystyrene. Moving on to core system 500, it is similar to the previous core system. It has a distillation column, but instead of only one pump, it has two pumps. The main function of distillation column 2 in core system 500 is to recycle the unreacted ethyl benzene back to reactor 1 to save costs on the raw materials. Other byproducts such as benzene, toluene, and toluene will be stored in a storage tank from the top outlet of distillation column 2. There are two heuristics obeyed in this distillation system, which are heuristic 9 and heuristic 10. Heuristic 9 states that a liquid mixture, regardless of its number of components, can be separated by using a distillation column. On the other hand, the heuristic 10 states that the vapor exiting distillation columns should be condensed. In our case, we should choose a total condenser for both of these distillation columns so that the vapor are fully condensed and it is all liquefied. Furthermore, distillation, distillate flow rate will be equivalent to the liquid flow rate going back to the distillation columns. All of the equipment in core system 400 and 500 are used uh, as carbon steel. The advantages of using this material of construction is discussed by my teammate earlier, such as material being cheap and readily available. Distillation column 1 in core system 400 uses a sieve tray column as it provides the highest efficiency and it is the lowest cost of all three types of trays. However, distillation column 2 in core system 500 utilizes a bubble cap tray because it has a relatively low liquid flow rate. The liquid flow rate at the inlet of distillation column 2 is half of distillation column 1. Because the desired product of styrene has been removed from the bottom outlet of distillation column one. That's all from my part, and now we have reached the QA session of the presentation.